fucking moron! Hey! Moron! No! <laughs> look, look at me! I'm the whole water boy, dude! Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Memorial Weekend. Don't forget what this is all about. This is about for all those that have made the sacrifice for all of us to be here and to be free. And remember that as you're stuffing your face this Memorial Weekend. Um, I am, um, for those out there, okay, I have, I, I'm looking at some of my videos from Vermont. I think I had too much maple syrup too many of the ice cream creamies, too many of the damn candies and sodas and stuff because they're trying to give you plenty of sugar to keep you up <coughs> during our community rebuild along with the food debauchery that I had during the season and probably the depression eating of the Dallas Cowboys offseason. I have gotten to be looking like I could be a defensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, Jerry Jones has not called me has not tried to sign me, so I think it's time for me to put this weight off, and I'm beginning to work on getting on a diet, and thus, at the moment, I am drinking black, black coffee um, because I'm fasting until, um, I believe it's 3 o'clock today. 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock? 16 hours. Okay, so I think it's 2 o'clock. So I'm fasting, and I'm actually going to go back on keto for a bit to... Um, start jump starting my body and doing a little bit better um if you want to follow along with the journey definitely check out joe boo's cooking and tailgating channel i'm posting some of the videos of what i'm doing as i go through this journey unfortunately the keto diet does work really well when you're doing it but the problem is is football always gets in the way and i know what puts weight on me and i know what takes it off of me now, if I were smart enough to go ahead and remember those two things when football season gets here, um, then I would be in much better shape. So definitely check out the other channel, Cooking and Tailgating with Joe Boo. I did some uh, keto blue cheese dressing yesterday, as well as uh, keto tuna salad, and I'm going to be doing a nice steak bowl for dinner tonight. Anyway, as we get here, I want to give you my thoughts at least. You'll remember Jerry Jones on uh, his bus um, during the Super Bowl when he was being asked about the Cowboys' culture. If the Cowboys had a culture problem. And his response to that was, if running the football and stopping the run are a culture problem, then yes, we have a culture problem. And I will say that we now have a little more clarification on what we are going to do with Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer, Dan Quinn and Mike Zimmer are two aggressive um, defensive coaches. They like to put pressure on the quarterback. I love that. I love to put pressure on the quarterback, get him uncomfortable. The thing is, is there's two different ways that they go about it. Dan Quinn likes his guys to be like heat-seeking missiles. He likes them to be fast and physical. He likes them to be taller, leaner, and quicker. So that way they can shoot the gaps. They can run around the offensive linemen and stuff. And they do, they are very, very effective in passing situations. The problem, of course, is running situations. Now, Mike Zimmer is also a guy who likes to get to the quarterback but the way he likes to do it is, is forget the fast. I want the physical. He wants to be, if Dan Quinn is a heat-seeking missile, Dan Quinn is the 5,000-pound bombs, the dumb bombs. We just want to pound you into submission. And what's evident of that is when you look at now the style of play that the Cowboys have. The weight that they're trying to put on. They're trying to put weight back on Mosley Smith, who 
Looks like he's going to be a three technique guy now. But they've got him back over 300. There's some dispute. Some people had originally said he was up to about 320. It more, more, looks more like 302, 305, maybe. But they're trying to put weight on him. And they may be waiting until his shoulder heals before they really, you know, fatten him up with grain. Um, because they want it to be muscle. They want it to be strength. Um, when you look at Overshone, who's put on like 12 to 15 pounds of muscle in there, that they are going to be coming at you, but they're going to be coming at you with force. I want to bring back a clip from three months ago um, talking about the Cowboys' culture problem and Mike Zimmer higher. And I want to look at this three months from build them. out this roster, build out this team, and see where you can go. I'm with that. And then here's your old team as our resident former Cowboy. Mike Zimmer is back in Dallas as the defensive coordinator. Was that the right choice? I love Mike Zimmer. And, and yes, from a coaching standpoint, from how good he's called defenses, my only pause and the reason why I'm met on this G is because I want to see what the front office is going to do as far as building a roster defensively and having what it takes to actually give Mike Zimmer all the pieces that's needed in order to have success. That's my issue. I talked about this a couple of days ago. People were like, you're not excited about Mike Zimmer. It has nothing to do with that. I want to be excited about what the Cowboys do at free agency as far as building a spine on their defense. This team last year, and I'm going to say it because you heard me say it a hundred times, this, this team in the National Football League that was trying to win a Super Bowl, play football without a linebacker. Here we go. Without, think about that. Think about the teams we just saw play in the playoffs. Bolton, Chanel, Gay for the Kansas City Chiefs, Werner, unfortunately lost Dre Greenlaw, Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen. Look at the teams that ended up having a tremendous amount of success. That part was missing. You bring in a new, new defense coordinator. If you don't have linebackers, I don't give a damn who he is. You ain't, you ain't going to look like a good one. <laughs> well, Zimmer was actually in Dallas the last time that team won a Super Bowl. And so, of course, was Emmitt Smith, the Cowboys legend. And now with Zimmer back again, Emmitt Smith has a lot to say. I want to read you some quotes from the legendary Emmitt Smith, as beloved a former Cowboy as there is. He said, I'm tired of being sold on what the Cowboys could be. Yeah. I'm tired. I've had enough of it because I'm more about what the Cowboys really are and who we really are and who we were. Nobody wants to fight no more. No one wants to fight hard anymore. They want to say, oh, we are the Cowboys. Tell me how good I am. Check out my Instagram posts. See me on my podcast. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm everything without doing everything. And everybody's patting them on the back. People want to give them so much without doing nothing. And what they're living off of is what happened in the past, not what's going down right now. We are delighted to, as usual, so, uh, mm, borrow Chris mm, Canty mm, from Unsportsmanlike mm. on ESPN Radio just for this conversation. <laughs> what do you think of what Emmett said, big fella? Well, Emmett's tired, and I guess it's ironic because he's got something to Cowboy with the Cowboys team this year because according to Demarcus Lawrence, who was on first take last year from the Super Bowl, the Cowboys were too tired and too burnt out to put up a fight against the Green Bay Packers in the playoffs. Yeah. And that's the part to me that's the biggest issue down there in Dallas. I hear what Marcus is talking about as far as the overall talent on the roster but by far the bigger issue is the culture down there in Big D is and Mike Zimmer is going to go a long ways to being able to help that out like Mike Zimmer is a no-nonsense type of coach he's off of that Bill Parcells coaching tree he's going to bring the, the requisite things that you need a DC to do he's got versatility Foot in his team whether it's three four four three he mixes it up with zone and man you're not going to get a beat on him that way but I think the most important thing is he's going to be no nonsense He's going to coach these guys hard, and from what it sounds like, that's something that's needed in Dallas. Absolutely, and, and you know, Lewis, you and I were talking about Emmett's comments earlier this morning, and basically what, 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 what you were telling me he's saying is these Cowboys are still living off of what his Cowboys did a generation ago. There is absolutely no doubt. That's what he's saying. Y'all are all getting paid and having podcasts and you know, getting put on GQ Sport Instagram page with your luggage and stuff as you're walking out the hotel, getting on the plane and stuff. You're getting all this attention off of the work that I did, off of the work that the playmaker did, off the work that Eric Williams did, off of the work that Darren Woodson did, off of the work that Troy Aikman did. 
Because I can tell you this, those teams, those teams weren't having it. I played against those teams. When they came out on the field, it wasn't like they, they weren't just trying to beat you. They were trying to, like, like they were trying, I don't even want to say they were trying to embarrass you. They were trying to punk you for three hours. And it was very, very evident. They played with a much different resolve, a much different competitive temperament. And they did it week after week after week. And Emmett Smith, was right at the forefront. You want to talk about one of the toughest players when we talk about toughness. You want to talk about the toughest players in the history, in the history of the National Football League. Emmitt Smith played, I believe he played a playoff, was it a playoff game against the Giants? Where his shoulder was separated. Yep. Yep. And mm-hmm. Jimmy Johnson kept giving it to him. And he kept giving it to him on the old school artificial turf. And he's getting dumped play after play. And you see him walking back to the huddle and they give it to him again. And again, and again, and again. And Evan Smith is saying, until somebody down there shows up like I showed up, I don't want to hear none of it. Tell me how good I am. Check out my Instagram posts. See me on my podcast. (laughs) Oh, oh, I mean, that, that, where does that come from? Like, uh, people will point to the culture. Who, who has to set that? Who, who is in charge of, if Evan is right, who's in charge? All right. So the question is, are they right? Have the Dallas Cowboys basically rested on their laurels, um, listening to everybody and their sister basically telling them how great they are, that they literally just figure weed and boys and that's all it is. Um, I think Mike Zimmer, his plan A of actually having linebackers, let's be clear here. We did not have linebackers last year going into the playoffs, and it showed. We had a lightweight defensive line, and it showed. We were run rough shot over. And if nothing else, accountability will happen. We will definitely be able to pound more with the physicality of having actually bigger players. I don't know how it's going to work out. And anybody who tells you that they know how the season is going to work out is a liar. Philly 500 told you the Eagles were going to win the division, you know, basically go 16 and, and 1 and win the Super Bowl. That didn't happen, though, did it? So there's a reason why we play the games. And we sit here right now only 102 games away, excuse me, 102 days away from the NFL season starting. All right, good people. We'll be doing our live stream at 5 o'clock today. If you are a channel member, you can join the chat. We'll have the link in the community tab for you. And I will see you there. Peace out, good people.